In this video, I want to talk to you how you can upgrade to the videos you produce, podcast episodes, talking head videos, but also sports videos and so much more. And it has everything to do with this slider right here. Not necessarily specifically this model, although I will be linking it down in the description below. And I will also talk about some of these special things that this one does in a unique way. But it is much more interesting to think about this as a general concept of how you can use motorized sliders in different areas. I had my first introduction to motorized sliders about 10 to 15 years ago. At the time, a guy named Tom Lowe made a movie that was called Timescapes, and he was basically doing time-lapse photography and using motorized sliders in all kinds of interesting ways to basically make an incredibly interesting time-lapse. Now, this is something that this motorized slider can do as well, but it's not the focus that I am more curious about today. Nowadays, I find it much more interesting to use these types of sliders in talking head videos, interviews, and of course, the yoga sports productions that we are doing as well. Sadly though, these things are rather big, which makes it really hard to travel with when you are constantly on the move. So I'm currently still looking for an alternative to this big one, which I was able to loan from a friend. Now, the areas that we specifically used it to today were talking head videos, course production, and of course also interviews and the production of sports classes. And there, it is incredibly interesting to add a mobile slider like this because you can have a motorized and moving camera, which adds a much more interesting perspective than just having a third camera, for example. Now, we generally already do film with either two cameras or three cameras, depending on the setup and, of course, depending on the use case. But this really changed the game, in my opinion. This is basically someone for you who constantly moves the camera back and forth. At least that's what I like to use it for. This is basically done by having, in this model, a motor right here on the side, then there's a belt, and then you have the sled itself, which is connected to the belt, and then it can be used by the motor, driving it from left to right. This all is controlled with this control unit right here, which also has the power, and this power, of course, then connects through the USB cord to the slider and the motor. So this is how you do this. And if you want to do the time-lapse photography, then you also have a bunch of cables which you can connect here in the back so that you can actually connect it to the camera so that the time-lapse photography is also triggering the shutter button whenever the slider is actually standing and not moving. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this specific model is that you can actually make the camera turn its head so that, for example, the person you're interviewing or that is currently talking in front of the camera for a course production, that the head actually stays right in the center. The way that you do this on this model is that you move the slider to whatever end you need it to be. Then you have this little knob right there and you can loosen this and you can basically push this in one direction. And then, of course, you see the head actually moves as well. And then you can push it in the other direction. And this way you can make a move completely the opposite way or when the camera is turned in the other direction. Most of the time you want to have it so that the camera actually circles around a certain person so that you make it look kind of like inward. And then you can move it to the middle and you can already see the camera kind of goes straight. So now it's center and straight. And then we move it all the way to the other end and do the same thing. So again, moving in this case to the opposite direction and fastening. And now I can move this around and the camera actually turns and looks always toward the center of the subject matter. And this is, I think, a really smart way because it keeps the whole profile really low and there's no additional motor that you have to have in the middle or something. It's just a very analog solution to an interesting problem. And I really appreciated the simplicity of this. The setup time was minimal. And now what I can do with the control unit, I can just have this drive back and forth all the time and make it motorized. I actually can turn on the control unit. I can go into the settings, set the start. I want to start with 100% speed. This is changeable after the fact. And then I can drive the slider to the end. Now, I have to be careful because this slider actually does not have automatic start and stop. Some sliders do, this one does not. So I want to set the start right there. 
and now it remembers the steps that it took to get there. And now I can do the same thing with the other direction. Again, have it slide all the way over to the other end, and then I have to press the button to stop the slider and remember basically how many steps there are between the start and the finish. And once this is done, and we'll see right there, I can press the button and now that is already set. And all of this is doing is set the start and end position so that this is remembered. Now I can go into the video feature and I can go to automatic mode. I want to loop it because it should drive back and forth between the start and the end point all the time. Now I can basically just start and it goes in 100% speed from left to right. Now, of course, I can also reduce the speed. So let's say I want to go at 64% and basically put down the control unit because now all of this is doing is driving from left to right all by itself fully automatically. And now this is basically what we've been using for podcast interview productions as well as videos of yoga classes to have a moving camera that constantly basically goes around the subject and keeps it in the center. In my opinion, this is one of the most interesting ways how you can upgrade the quality of something like a interview or a sports class because you have something that is also moving in the subject and it's different than, for example, using a 4K image and just selecting a part of the image and moving that left and right with keyframes. Here, you actually have a perspective shift so that it three-dimensionally actually kind of drives around the subject and that way gives you a more intriguing, more interesting perspective to look at when you are specifically, for example, in a long podcast interview where other than that is not really much going on. You know, this basically is a shot that is shot from right where I set it up and you saw me set up the turn and now you can actually see how the slider is actually doing its thing and it is moving from one end to the other. Right now at about 64% speed and I'm going to just increase the speed so it goes all the way up to 100% and this is how the slider looks and moves when I set it up to 100%. Now I didn't really do a very good job at keeping the center of the center. So you notice that the center actually is drifting. And now you can also see how the slider actually turns around. And when you are using this type of a shot in an interview type setup or something like that, you usually only want to use it whenever it is actually from left to right. And you don't really want to have the turning of the uh, ending in the shot itself. That is something that I would make sure so that this is basically just a secondary option to basically just cut in between. So sometimes the cuts are actually less noticeable in your production of your course or something like that. And that of course is that much easier if you are actually doing it with a slower motion. However, don't do it too slow because otherwise then there's nothing to notice at all within the movement of the slider itself. I have been using 70% on this specific model and it's about a minute that it takes from left to right. So you can keep it for a bit of a longer shot, but it is also constantly moving fast enough so that you actually have something that is happening in the shot, that there is something noticeable going on. One thing that you have to be aware of is that the sounder does make a slight noise. Depending on how fast it goes, it actually becomes a little louder or more noticeable. So don't necessarily put it on a surface like a table like I have it right here because that of course also transfers the resonances and kind of makes it even louder. If you have it on a tripod setup, then it is not really that noticeable. But of course, again, don't necessarily bring it right next to the person speaking. Maybe put it a couple of meters away, then you should be totally fine with the amount of noise that is coming from the slider. Of course, you can also set it up on a tripod so you have one tripod plate in the middle. This is actually really cool because that way you only need to carry one more tripod but in that case you should really use a sturdy video type tripod and not something that just is a simple ball head. But if you want to have it really stable then I would always recommend you anyways put it on two tripods so one on this end and then one on this end and then you really have the whole thing pretty stable and rock solid. Now is this necessary? Of course it's not. However, I think it is a super interesting upgrade if you are looking to change up the perspectives of your productions, courses, and so on. 
if I could, I would just bring this everywhere we go with our setup because I would love to have the ability to add this moving type of a shot to everything we do with the different platforms that we work on so that just the overall quality is so much higher. Now, as you've already seen, the slider now is reaching the end of the slide again. So it is going to turn around any moment now and then it goes into the other direction. In the market, there is tons of these different sliders. The specific one that I would love to test and try out, and of course, maybe even travel with, is one that is called the iFootage Shark Slider Mini. However, I haven't been able to get my hands on that yet. And this specific model that you see here on the table is the GVM, so it's a great video maker slider type. And I will have that linked in the description below. I think it's from Amazon and there's a couple of different models in terms of length as well as a control unit with USB or with Bluetooth and those kind of things. But overall, I just wanted to talk about the use case of these and how you might be able to upgrade the overall quality of your productions with something like the slider. Of course, there's way more options that you also have in all kinds of other use cases. Like for example, you can do stop motion productions and time lapses and all of these things, but that's a completely different use case and something that I haven't been using this for. And so that's what I want to focus on. And now with all that said, I hope you find a way to upgrade your productions with a motorized slider like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.